Hey everybody, Dan here from Sherp ET. I've not been out there for a while. I apologize for that, but I have been enjoying myself hunting. Um, unfortunately, I didn't come back with anything, but I did see a lot of nice deer and had a great time. But it's time to get back to the grindstone with the Sherp, so I'm going to take the Sherp along with the trailer, and we're going to go to the pond. I got one log I got to cut up. And the temperature has been jumping up here, up and down here in Wisconsin, but last night it was down to, I don't know, somewhere around 20. And I think it's gonna be fairly low tomorrow. Tomorrow, the high is supposed to be 36. So my guess is there's going to be enough ice on the pond uh, for me to go out and uh, have some fun, hopefully stay on top of it. But if not, I can play with that too. Um, because it is so cold, I don't know if you can hear that right now, but I do have that Wabasco heater running. Uh, I pulled out that lever too to make sure that everything was going inside of the engine compartment. I've only had it running for about 15 minutes. I was futzing out here in the shed getting my snowmobile ready and some other things. Um, so I did have the heater on and I had turned it up to probably about 40. Uh, but hoping to Again, you turn that key uh, about three quarters of the way, and then that gets to go up the door. Come on, baby. Got it all loaded up and ready to go. Quite surprisingly, I had one tire tire that was a little bit low on air, so let's hope that uh, that was a fluke, and I don't have to be patching a tire tomorrow morning. We'll see. So I made it to the farm about an hour and a half away, had the old trailer on because I was going to move some wood and that actually didn't actually pan out. But while I'm down here, the side of this small little knoll, this little woods that's there, always gets a lot of brush. So if you just kind of drive through, especially all that dry stuff, it really knocks it down really nice. And the trailer really does pull over pretty much anything. But as I've stated in the past, it does not pull that well in the water, especially going up current. It really slows the thing down. I'm not sure how much it actually decreases it, but it is quite a bit. Well, I was able to capture a little bit of drone footage, but it was an extremely windy day, and the, and the drone kept kind of veering off and not staying with me like it normally did and actually even ended up in the tree at the end of the day. That's why I'm stopped right now trying to control it a little bit. Um, but the propellers were damaged. They can be fixed. We'll give her another shot in the future. Not really, really deep here. You can tell that by some of that mud there that's going up onto the ice. I was eventually able to get up on top of the ice, however, and kind of keep moving, but I could not get that back to pop up. And this was the strongest ice of the day because, again, it did get warmer throughout the day. I thought there was going to be a little bit more ice than this. I'm guessing that there's only about an inch, inch and a half, uh, especially how cold it is. We'll see if I can pop back up on it again. I'm not sure if I can or not. So the morning started off about 20 degrees Fahrenheit and jumped up to about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So as the day progressed, the ice got weaker and weaker. And I just had a really difficult time in getting up on top of it. It was pretty cool though to kind of push the ice like a barge as you're running around. I'm sure you'll see a lot more of that. Coming up out of the water is one of my favorite things to do with the Sherb. Most of the time it really has traction just pulls and it's amazing what angles you can actually get when you come up out of the water it doesn't really look like a lot there but there that passenger side wheel is definitely off the ground and when we go to the farm we've always got to hit the famous rock if you remember right two years ago that rock was underwater so it's a lot drier year this year there's a pretty good shot of some virgin ice Kind of look closely too you can see that crack that's going all the way through the ice i think that's actually for me messing around i don't believe that was there when we first started you can kind of see how that front end is coming up if the ice was thicker she'd stay on top and then pretty soon that rear end would jump up on top and you'd be off and running 
as I'm driving through, you can kind of see sometimes the water has a little bit of mud in it. That means that I'm hitting the bottom or I'm very close to the bottom. Again, this pond is probably the deepest, maybe five feet, but underneath that water is about five feet of muck. There's only bullheads that really live in this. It's crazy how relaxing it can be to just sit up in the shirt in the middle of a pond and bust it up by ice. Kind of slick. Well, before I finished up the whole day, I wanted to just put the trailer on, pull it a little bit through the water. I did get to a couple of spots where she was floating, but I didn't actually capture that on video. Um, again, it doesn't really pull that well in the water, especially when there's a load on it. I've discovered that in the past. But the other nice thing about going through the water like this is it cleaned it up a little bit too, so I did that a couple of times. Just got a little bit more practice. You gotta be a little careful with the trailer on the back because you can turn too sharp both on the water and on the land. So pay attention if you are driving that. Well, we're coming to an end of this video. I'm not sure where I'm gonna go next. If you have some place that you would like to go, drop me a line. We'll see if we could actually maybe make that happen. Um, had a good experience here, and I'm looking forward to the cold temperatures so we can get out in the ice and have ourselves a good time. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Um, take care. Bye-bye.